there everybody well it's almost st patrick's day and i'm in my green and i also wanted to show you the eon 130 triplet refractor telescope the results so far have been amazing stick around i'm going to show you some of those pictures welcome to heavenly backyard astronomy Soon after I got the telescope, I had a spell of some clear nights, several clear nights, and I was able to test out the telescopes on different targets, nebula, nebulae, and galaxies. And, you know, we're coming into galaxy season now, but some of the galaxies are already up. And if you uh, uh, have your sessions after midnight, you can see those galaxies up in the eastern sky rising up, particularly in uh, Leo and in Virgo. Uh, a lot of uh, galaxies out there, but I was even able to test out the uh, reducer that I had bought for the ED80 T telescope, the little 80 millimeter telescope. And, you know, I like that telescope so much, I thought, if this one is so good, the Orion Eon 130, which is the big brother to this, has to be just as good, if not even better. And sure enough, the reducer did work. So I'm very pleased about that. One of the things I really like about this scope as well is the focal um, chain, the uh, uh, the focuser right here, it has this device where it just twists and locks or twists and unlocks and it comes very useful because you just put your camera in and you lock it and it's not going to go anywhere and it's, it's, a, it's a nice uh, spherical lock all around the camera itself so it doesn't pinch the camera and easy on and easy off. It also has a great focuser, uh, a, a standard focuser and a 10 to 1 ratio focuser. It's really smooth on the focus. Now I added the uh, Pegasus uh, focus cube to the uh, system and it, it fits like a champ and it works like a champ uh, with the focuser. So uh, I have focusing, uh, very clean focusing with this uh, telescope. Now it also has these, these hoops uh, so that uh, when I have different elements on the telescope itself to rebalance, I just simply loosen up these uh, clamps here on the uh, hoops, of course, to keep my back hand on the camera or the telescope just in case. But the, uh, the scope then easily slides back and forth. If I loosen it up, there, here we go. It, it just slides back and forth so I can balance it much easier. And of course, you know, the better off you're balancing, the better off your tracking is going to be. Another thing that's nice is the dew shield and this comes all the way down and uh, it comes up and it's going to stay and it, it's nice uh, so it, it gives you extra protection for outside glare and also for uh, protection of dew now to enhance that the lens is right about here i have my dew strap uh, right here so that helps with the prevention of the dew uh, here in the southeast we have a lot of humidity and hence a lot of dew at night and this helps a lot particularly with this dew shield <laughs> also another nice little feature on this telescope is the the uh, lens cap itself uh, it comes on and comes off rather easily but it stays on when you put it on and it stays nice and snug so it, it, it's 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 a really nice little um, lens cap to go along with the telescope so all in all, I'm very pleased with the, uh, the functions of the telescope. You know, the lens is you know, the primary you know, the, the device of the telescope itself, and the, the lens here is, is, is spectacular. But the, uh, the, the other features, the, uh, the dew shield, the focuser, uh, the uh, locking clamp on the focuser itself, all these enhance this telescope. So I, I'm just so glad I bought this Eon 130 uh, millimeter refractor triplet telescope. So without further do let's go upstairs and take a look at some of these images spectacular images in my opinion that i was able to capture with the eon 130 millimeter uh, refractor telescope all right well let's take a look at some of the images from the first light from the eon 130 triplet to refractor telescope and of course this time of the year orion's always a good target to uh uh, pick and to use to test telescopes and there it is I tested this I used the high-resolution camera the monochrome camera the ZWO 1600 mm camera using red green and blue filters and it came out pretty nice as you can see nice and clear crystal clear so I was very pleased with this um, the jellyfish nebula I did that one too 
And this is a uh, remnants of a supernova that exploded somewhere, I don't know, between three and 30,000 years ago. Uh, this uh, nebula is about, what is it, uh, 5,000 light years away? Um, yeah, and the uh, star in front of it, uh, this is Propus or Eta um, Gemini, and uh, this is only about 300 light years away and very bright star but it came out pretty good in the photograph and look at how sharp the other stars came out as well so again very pleased uh, with uh, the um, telescope shooting nebulosity what about the galaxies you know we're coming into galaxy season right now and here's a, a a great one to have actually this is uh, uh, running ahead of the galaxy season this one is you can see this in November and December but also January February March April because it's high up in the northern sky and in many locations in the northern portion of the world it's uh, uh, circumpolar it never sets uh, but this is Bode's Nebula uh, also known as Messier 1 Messier 81 and it's very much like our own Milky Way galaxy as you can see here uh, we're almost looking at this face on and uh, the spiral arms and so forth and, and and like the Milky Way galaxy it has about 250 billion stars and uh, uh, nearby in Bode's galaxy you have the uh, cigar galaxy M82 and let's take a look at that I did that as well and uh, there you can see uh, it, looking at it almost edge on it's nicknamed the cigar galaxy but I sometimes like to call it the exploding cigar galaxy because it looks like it's exploding here in the center uh, this is an area uh, of new star birth ongoing in this galaxy and um, uh, it, it's it, it, it's an interesting galaxy because you know, it's perpendicular to the plane of the galaxy itself you don't see too much of that sometimes you see the uh, uh, globular clusters around perpendicular to the galaxy itself but uh, this uh, burst of energy going in uh, in both directions perpendicular from the plane of the galaxy makes this a very very interesting galaxy uh, to view let's see what else we have here we got the oh one of my favorites the hamburger galaxy and uh, this galaxy is part of the triplet in Leo or the Leo triplet and this one is what uh, I believe it's the NGC 3628 of course it says right here at the bottom and uh, this one's about 35 million light years away along with the other two galaxies that are nearby which be down below the picture here um, and uh, yeah it came out pretty good I was very pleased with this I took this with a one-shot color camera and uh, of course uh, in tune with the uh, heavenly backyard garden I took a picture of a flower in the heavens the sunflower galaxy now I really don't want to use this as a test for the new telescope because I was experimenting with a lower grade camera uh, a one-shot color camera and it has a very small pixel size so it's not really designed for um, deep space it's more designed closer to planetary observation than deep space observation um, but it's still it picked up the galaxy pretty well as you can see here uh, look at way over here there's a galaxy way off in the distant distance and uh, that thing must be over 100 million light years away maybe even 150 million light years away well this galaxy here is 37 million light years away so that gives you a pretty good uh, idea that this one has to be much further away well, anyway, there's the sunflower galaxy and the, of course another famous galaxy that uh, many of us like to uh, target is the whirlpool galaxy or Messier 51 along with its companion galaxy here and uh, that one is what NGC New General Catalog 5195 is that right and uh, uh, this galaxy here uh, is about 23 million light years away up there in the Big Dipper Ooh, look at this way 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 off in the distance that must be gosh over 200 million light years away that little galaxy right there can we zoom in on that let's see if I can go a little bit um, closer in on that I miss it there it is and that that thing is way out there this is about a three-hour exposure here all right let's uh, go to um, uh, the Virgo cluster lots of galaxies in Virgo and you have this famous chain of galaxy I always get the name mispronounced but I think it's been Kurian 
uh, Mancarian chain of galaxies, but you can get M84 here, M86, I believe. Let's see, I think I got them labeled. M84, M86 here. Then these are a lot of uh, uh, other galaxies that are uh, uh, within the picture. There you can see one way off the distance, another one way over there. Uh, there's one right there, another one right there. Uh, cluster of galaxies here, one there, one there, uh, one over, a couple over here, there's one, more over here, and uh, there's more over here. Look at all the galaxies. You know, we're, we're talking trillions upon trillions of stars, and, you know, some of these stars have to be able to support life. You know, something to think about. When I, when I took this picture, it just, it just blew my mind. It just blew my mind, and then I stitched it together to get the rest of the chain. Uh, this is where the uh, first picture ended and I added these two pictures, uh, th this uh, picture to, from making two pictures here out of one and, um, or making one out of the two. And you can see the continuation of the galaxies itself. Now down here, just below that is M87. Uh, I think I got a picture of that, M87. Uh, this is a galaxy that supports at least a trillion stars, huge galaxy. And uh, there you can see other galaxies uh, uh, around it as well. So, you know, uh, there's galaxies there. Those, those things must be 250 million or more light years away. So it, it's very interesting to see all these galaxies out here. And, and you just got to wonder, is there, you know, possibility of life out there in some of these other stars? Are they looking through their telescopes and seeing the Milky Way, seeing thinking, is there life in that galaxy? Well, we're still debating that one, if it's intelligent life or not. But anyway, this is what I'm seeing with the telescope. And I'm very, very pleased so far with the uh, the Orion Eon 130 millimeter refractor triplet. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good telescope. Well, one thing I want to add to this uh, information, uh, I use the Orion um, 0.8x imaging focal reducer for small uh, focal length refractors. In other words, refractors with focal lengths of less than, um, there it is right there, less than uh, 1,000 millimeters. And the Eon 130 triplet has a focal length of 910. So I figured, well, this would work. I bought this uh, for the um, Orion ED80 telescope, which I really love. And that telescope was so good I, I, that I, well, I just figured, if this one is good, Big Brother must be even better, and sure enough it is. But I used this focal reducer on the big telescope, the 130, and for example, this is the, one of the pictures I, I, I use, and you, you look on the edges of the field of view here, and well, there's where the stacking was over there, but uh, you can still see the stars are nice and round on the edges here. That's edge center, upper right, um, still, they're, they're pretty much round, um, up lower right, let's take a look here, and I got a little bit of distortion here, uh, and that might be because I didn't have it, uh, the focal, back focus exactly right, I might have been off by a millimeter, uh, but going on the other side, I would take a look, and yeah, they're a little off a little bit there too, right there and right there on the bottom, what about bottom center, we will take a look at that, and yeah, they're off. So yeah, the whole thing on the bottom is off a little bit, but uh, going into the middle of the picture, that's nice and round. Look at those stars. And um, these were five minute exposures too. So uh, I might've been a little bit of a tracking error. Um, going into the upper, yeah, that's, that's uh, let's see, upper, upper left. Yeah, pretty round. I mean, it's a little distorted, not by much. So again, I, it might've been my, back focus wasn't exactly right, but this little reducer does work with the uh, Eon 130 millimeter telescope. Well, thanks for watching and uh, uh, expect to see a lot more images coming in from this telescope over the next several months on Heavenly Backyard Astronomy on my YouTube channel. And also you can catch me on my Facebook page, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy, and uh, also Heavenly Backyard. Uh, my weather and nature channel, and uh, also savannapat.name. There is my main uh, web page right there, and from there you can get off into my uh, uh, Facebook pages, my Twitter page, and my um, uh, YouTube channel, all from and my astronomy page, heavenlybackyardastro.com. All there from uh, savannapat.name. That's my website. Well, again, remember 
the heavens are filled with majestic glory. And you saw a lot of them on the pictures, but remember, they're also in a sky near you. Thanks for watching, everyone.